All right, we are going to try something today. We are going to do a little bit of experiment and see uh, how the different auto farms for trees compare to each other. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've built many different versions of them, and I'm going to test this over the course of an hour, and we'll see just how they compare to each other. Um, so you can see they've each run for a little bit. They're uh, just a quick rundown of all of the various parts uh, before I get going. So over here we have the Forestry Multi Farm. Um, this is one of the smaller ones. I believe it is a four or five, three, four, yeah, five. Um, that holds 72 blocks of uh, growable land. All set to trees. Um, and we have that um, an aqueous accumulator providing water. We've got uh, about 500 stacks of dirt sitting here to import as it turns that into sand. Um, we do have a supply of fertilizer. Again, we're going to let this run for an hour. I figured 500 stacks is a good marker. Um, you know, that's, that's not a small amount of equipment for the various things that these systems require. Um, and if it runs through 500 in an hour, well, then you probably shouldn't use the calculation of having that stuff available because that's pretty crazy. Anyway, um, it is going to output all of the content, which are going to be the saplings, the, well, you can see it right here, the wood, the apple oak saplings, the sand, the regular oak saplings, and apples, because of course it's forestry, so sometimes it turns them into apple oak. Um, so it's going to export all of that through the tubes to the chest. The router extracts it from the chest, ejects it to this, which then inserts it into the barrel of the appropriate measure. Um, that's pretty much the system all of these are going to use, except for the Steve's Cart Farm, which just comes to the distributor and then just distributes to the various barrels. Um, you can see I've, there's going to be one of each item in each barrel, just to set the barrel um, to what it needs to be before we get started. I figured that... So, you know, one is not really going to affect the outcome. Over here, we have the regular forestry, uh, arboretum, and logger. Uh, the, uh, what is this called? Forester, I think. Yeah, forester. Um, I was using the forester, but the uh, catalyst that it requires does cause some errors, and I was getting some weird... Um, bugs that I'm not sure are the fault of that, but just to be on the safe side, I still just took it out. Um, what we've got over here is we've again got a little over 500 stacks of the humus, uh, and that is just in a loop. Um, let me stick a torch down here. Um, that is just in a loop with an iron that feeds back into the bottom, uh, and you can see it just is in a constant loop, so as this requires it, it will keep filling it up. Um, and then we just export all of the the things, the uh, saplings are fed directly back into the arboretum and any overflow goes straight back through this iron pipe um, straight to where the rest of this is going to flow and then out to the router setup with the barrels. Um, over here uh, is our Steve's Cart farm. So we just, just showed you the output of that a second ago. This has 72 blocks of growable uh, land. The Steve's Cart has 72 blocks and I regulated that by placing, since we're on cracked sand, trees can't grow on cracked sand, uh, so there are 72 blocks of dirt that the cart has available. Uh, this cart is a, let's see here, um, so it's just got the engine, the solar engine, it's got a wood cutter, and then the rest is just storage. So there's no fertilizer, there's no hydrator, nothing like that, just a straight up cheap um, little cart. All right, over here, we have a mine factory reloaded three by three with a 500 uh, stack supply of fertilizer that'll be going in and we have our fertilizer. Um, you can see I've had these running just to test and make sure that everything is working correctly and this thing filled up uh, with a lot of sludge. Not quite to the top yet but so the sludge towers are sort of irrelevant but I thought I would include them just because that is kind of a handy resource. It's just, you know, it's there. This one clearly fills it up crazily. Um, and again, we have the output set to uh, the barrels with the router and all of that. Over here, we have a 3x3 non-fertilized setup. 
So you will be able to compare those two quite easily. Over here, we have a medium-sized farm. We have a uh, silver upgrade, so that's an increased radius of six on each side of the planter. And of course, there's one in the harvester over there. This is, again, non-fertilized, because that would be a crazy amount of fertilizer. Um, and I've, from what I've read, this is right around the optimal range. I've heard that a larger farm than this, the you lose a lot of efficiency in the time it takes to scan. Um, I was going to try a max size farm over here, but there seems to be an issue. Every time I try and access the planter underneath it, um, it like starts to pull my equipment out of my power suit stuff out of my inventory and put it into the planter. I don't really know what's going on there. Um, so depending on the results of this, I may go ahead and test that. We'll see. Like if this uh, six sort of keeps up with the rest or sort of surpasses them, um, I might just go ahead and test a 12 on its own because when all this power is on and all these are going, it is slightly laggy and a little cumbersome. So I don't know if maybe it's just finally too much. I don't know. Um, over here we have, this is a iron upgrade, so just an increase of two just to sort of see like, okay, well, here's a base, no upgraded farm. Here's one that has an upgrade of two. How are these going to compare after an hour? Like how much of an impact does that upgrade have? Uh, and then just past here, we have our last mine factory reloaded farm, and that one is with the tin upgrade. So just to sort of see, these are all both unfertilized, no fertilizers being used. Um, and it really is just to sort of compare like, well, what is the difference between a one block upgrade, a two block upgrade? How much of a difference does that really make after an hour as far as how many trees that you get? So we're gonna let that run. What we've got for power is I have some disparate power systems like this with a bunch of solars that I just set up and ran into some MFSUs that probably there's not enough MF MFSUs. Um, and then into just some energy bridges and conversions and all that kind of stuff connected to some red power tubes that come over here and here's a there's a, inside there is the quantum generator which is a creative only because we're in creative mode um, just to test all this out hooked up to a bunch of energy conversion and that's outputting a bunch of energy just it is um, hooked up to a bunch more red circuits to power all of this stuff um, so all of the power, there's another power system over here that's the same kind of deal um, with the energy converters and everything. And all of those all link back to here. And all of the power systems to process the trees all link back to right there. So all I have to do is connect these two and the process will start. So we are going to take one hour all of the various systems have exactly one item in their outputs. Uh, they are all, for the most part, regrown and fully grown so that they should begin harvesting immediately. Um, there are a couple little, like, you know, oh, there's some sand there, so, you know, there's some sand over there, there's over on this one. It was slightly through the harvesting process when I turned the power off. Um, but I don't think those are going to impact it enough. Like, if we get down to it and uh, our mine factory thing over here is like one or two away from another one, then we'll know that's sort of the reason why. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this process up. Uh, I am going to put myself in creative. Just so that I can give myself the piece of redstone I need to connect everything. Um... And we're going to start this off, and I will run around and show you that it's all working, and I will then sort of be doing some pauses and checking back in periodically. So let me make sure everything is set and ready to go, and I will connect the redstone, so I will be back in a second. All right, and here we go. The timer is set. I'm going to start this off, and then I will see... Well, I'll probably do some videos in between, maybe. We'll see. All right, and... There they go. Everything is functioning. Yep, 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 yep. All right. I will see you guys in a bit. All right. And an hour is up, so there we'll break the connection. 
I had some intermittent uh, videos, but I think I'm going to take those out um, because. You know, I'd like to try and keep this around 15-ish minutes. So what we're doing now is we're just letting the residual charge in the various machines run out. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and clear out all these inventories. I'll tally all of this up, and then we will be back with the results. All right, and we are back with the results. We have tallied everything. It is all done. After an hour, the results are the MFR 3x3 with no fertilizer performed the least. Uh, just over three stacks of wood and just over a stack of saplings. I'm assuming wooden saplings are probably of the most interest for, of course, charcoal and biofuel and whatnot production. Um, apples are nice, but I'm assuming that's not your goal. Um, second was the Forestry Arboretum that came in at seven uh, stacks and a st full stack of saplings. The multi-farm performed, multi performed slightly better at eight stacks over the hour and th almost three times the stacks of saplings. But notice way more apples, even more apples than a lot, like, you have to get up to the top two before you get more apples than the multi-farm. Multi so if you're going for apple juice, uh, that would be the multi-farm. Looks like it might be one of your better options, unless you, of course, can get up to the top tiers here. Um, all right. Uh, after the multi-farm, we had the iron upgrade, uh, which, of course, is the smaller of the two upgrades, and that was 22 stacks. So look at that. From the multi-farm to the MFR with... That's Mine Factory Reloaded, by the way, if you didn't know. With the iron upgrade, you're looking at more than double the number of stacks of logs. Uh, it's just another full stack of saplings, um, and, of course, slightly less apples because that thing is crazy. Um, from the iron upgrade, actually, Steve's cart sneaks in before the tin. Remember, the iron is the, I believe it was plus two, and the tin is plus three. So Steve's cart came in at 24 stacks in the hour, but more saplings. So we had another jump right here. So here's our first jump between the multi-farm and the iron upgrade. Here's our first jump in logs, but our first jump in, in saplings, well, I mean, I guess that's kind of a jump. With the, yeah, I guess the multi-farm is kind of a clear victor over the others. Um, below it. The iron is definitely an upgrade over the multi-farm, and I think it's probably cheaper and easier to set up. Um, Steve's cart is super easy to set up and get them going. That's why they're popular, but notice they're, they're on the upper end of the middle, but still pretty much in the middle, um, but that's good. 24 stacks of logs, 7 stacks of saplings, you can certainly use that. The tin upgrade, which is, of course, the three as opposed to the irons two, we get 28 logs. So six more logs in an hour, um, but three more stacks of saplings. So, you know, is that one one extra space around a big difference? Eh, one is probably not. But then if we go with the silver, which is the plus six, so double, we go from 28 logs in an hour to 69 logs in an hour. Uh, we go from seven sapling stacks in an hour to 16 sapling stacks in an hour, and we get almost double the amount, or not double, but a full stack of apples more. But of course, the king is the MFR 3x3 with fertilizer. So, if it's fertilized the entire time, look at that. This thing is a, uh, what would that be, seven... Uh, it's a 13x13, 13 13, I believe. A 13 by 13 without fertilizer got us almost 70 stacks in an hour. A 3 by 3 with fertilizer got us 144 stacks in an hour. 20 stacks of saplings versus the 16 here. And this is a big jump. Like, going from the 3 extension to the 6 extension, that's huge. That's more than double the amount of saplings in an hour, um, which, is, which is pretty good. But this thing just blew them all away. The MFR 3x3 with fertilizer. And I started it with exactly 500 stacks. So in the hour, we started with 500. We've got 476 left. So what is that? 23 plus some change stacks. So 23 plus change stacks to get 144 stacks of wood. Oop, oh, see if I can make everyone throw up with my erratic movements. 144 stacks of wood, 20 stacks of saplings, and four 
and a half stacks of uh, apples. So pretty neat. Um, that That's it. That wraps it up. That's just over an hour. Um, if you guys would like to see more or you are uh, confused about something or think that there's another aspect I should be testing, uh, let me know and I can certainly look into it. Um, here's the sludge. thought I'd show that to you. Uh, this tower was sort of mostly full before we even started, so I built a second one at about halfway through. So that thing filled up I don't know, maybe almost halfway in 30 minutes. This is off the 3x3 with fertilizer. That is a lot of sludge. A lot. Um, same story over here. This one was mostly full, so we filled up. This is the uh, 6, the 13x13 13 13 MFR, second place. So, there you go. If you can make fertilizer, definitely the way to go. Uh, I think it would be scary if you put fertilizer on this guy. I don't know how much he would use, but I the extra dimensional barrel would be much fuller. Um, so, there you go. Those are the results. I'm the Average Gamer Guy. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.